Ventures Capital. And uh, like Mark was saying, I'm in the process of uh, spinning out and starting up my own little firm. Um, since I couldn't think of a name, it's called uh, Elephant Ventures. <laughs> uh, and so my firm, if everything goes according to plan, will be a $35 million fund. Um, and prior to Opus, uh, I was at Lightspeed Venture Partners. And then prior to that, I was at Battery Ventures. So I've been doing venture since about 99. And I focus on software investment, so not digital media or internet, much more kind of boring software investments. Great. So whenever Ken is here, the elephant is always in the room, I guess. Right? Yeah. Oh, oh. So since we're going on names, I'm just oh. saying. So uh, my day job is also a VC. I work at a firm called CMEA Capital. We're about a mid-sized fund. Um, uh, last fund is a $400 million fund, although lately all of, almost all of my checks have started off as sort of hundreds of thousands of dollar kind of checks um, that have sort of scaled up. So I do all our web and digital media investing. And actually prior to CMEA, I was at Garage. Um, I saw Bill here earlier, and there's a lot of Garage logos around here, so um, okay. it's kind of like coming home. Um, and then in addition to sort of my day job, I, I kind of make amends for all the pillaging I do by um, doing some film stuff. I start, helped start the Film Angels a while yep. back. I do a lot of stuff at the Stanford Design School as well. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole sort of section around liberation technologies, which are really interesting to me. So I, so I do make up for it in my nights and weekends. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Noah? Um, I'm Noah Doyle with uh, Javelin Venture Partners. We're an early stage fund, um, a new fund started about uh, three years ago to bridge the gap between seed and institutional. Um, we invest anywhere from 250000 to $2 million, and uh, we're, we're a team of um, people who've started companies. Um, everyone has started multiple companies, so we really um, build a firm, have a culture, and invest like entrepreneurs. Um, and uh, we have um, our new fund we closed in January. It's our second fund. It's $105 million in size. Um, my background is... Uh, mostly in internet, started my career at Oracle, um, started a company called MyPoints, um, then um, uh, did some angel investing, joined a company called Keyhole that I angel invested in, um, which was acquired by Google, became Google Earth, did uh, three years at Google, and then got into venture from there. Great, and well, one of the requirements is they all had to bring term sheets with them, and they also have <laughs> cash and briefcases, so with that, make sure that you know, presenters are doing well. So I, we, we talked earlier, and one of the things, how many of you played Flight Simulator early on, right? Okay, so this is the follow-on. With that, please take it away, and he's actually from Palo Alto, so not from France, please. Thank you, my name is Iran Karoli, and I'm very excited to present FlyV to you today. Uh, we provide personal and professional flight capture and debriefing systems. We're an early stage startup, and we're based uh, in Palo Alto, as was mentioned. Um, aviation has changed in some amazing ways over the last 100 years. Airframes, engines, and instrumentation. But guess what has not changed? Flight training hasn't changed much. Uh, if post-flight debrief still relies solely on subjective memories of the flight today. We are changing that, and we're changing it by capturing in-flight data. Uh, our personal system captures in-flight data on the pilot's iPhone using multiple sensors, including audio, video and location information, all of that on the, per, on the pilot's iPhone. Uh, but then we have a professional line which is intended for permanent installation in fleets of aircraft. And uh, in, that per, in that professional model, we provide a uh, compact flight recorder which uh, uploads the flight, rec the flight information onto an SD card which is easily removable, of course, and the recorder connects to the airplane's instrumentation, multiple sensors, and cameras. Uh, our IP uh, is protected. We have a number of patents protecting our IP. It includes the way we capture, blend, synchronize, and present the uh, results to the uh, pilot. Um, after we capture the information, we upload it to our server, uh, process and synchronize the information, and then present it to the pilot or the user via an easy-to-use web interface. Having access to that uh, flight data is part of our long-term um, fee-based, um, long-tail subscription service, so, so there's another subscription service following the uh, capturing of the information. Um, just ki kind of a little bit of background, the personal uh, space for training is a $1.7 billion a year market, uh, while the professional space is about $1.4 billion per, per year. Um, pricing and channels of distribution, pretty simple. Uh, for our personal sol solution, we provide an app which is available in the App Store. And then we sell a mounting and connection kit for $50. And the pilot may choose between uh, pay-as-you-go subscription uh, methodology for $9.90 a month 
or pay the annual $99 subscription fee. Uh, for the professional side, we have established a uh, strategic alliance with the perfect partner, Jeppesen. Jeppesen is part of the Boeing company. It's the undisputed leader in navigation and in training. And uh, they have established relationships with all of the major and minor uh, flight schools in the country and in the world. They will start private uh, labeling our product in Q4 of 2011. And uh, integrated with other Jeppesen training resources, they will sell our solution for about $3,500 per plane uh, and an annual subscription fee of $290 per pilot. Uh, for those flight schools not covered by the uh, Jeppesen Salesforce, we will sell our solution directly uh, at uh, $2,500 uh, per plane. Uh, a student and instructor practicing landings. Let's see how that that uh, training session is reviewed using the uh, FlyV uh, solution. With the flight, with the student and the instructor. Yeah. 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 stop and critique at any point of the flight. The flight is recorded on an SD card. Both the video captures, the GPS and audio, everything is recorded on the SD card. All the student or instructor has to do is plug it into his PC, view the segments of the flight that he's interested in. Just to make it clear, this is not a simulation. <laughs> this is an actual <laughs> flight, in case you're wondering. So as you can see, the browser-based flight viewer shows us the uh, instruments and pilot activities, uh, the view forward, uh, a flight path overlaid on an aeronautical chart, the 3D GPS track, all of the audio which happened um, in the plane and between the instructor and ATC, air traffic control, and bookmark tags which allows the, allow the pilot to jump to specific areas in the flight to review and further debrief those, uh, those interesting parts of the flight. Uh, until today, the flight debriefing was completely subjective, but we provide objective flight debriefing with clear benefits, and soon enough, our users will be able to uh, share their flights with their family and friends. Uh, we already have a number of very satisfied and repeat customers. Uh, those include Embry-Riddle, the largest aeronautical university in the country, as well as the West Valley Flying Club, the largest flying club in the nation. Um, as I mentioned, our IP is well protected uh, by patents, and it's really based around the data capture and compression and synchronization of the information. So the question is, can we apply this unique IP to other markets? And the answer is yes. Um, we have identified numerous markets in which we can apply our IP. Uh, the first is transportation. Uh, following that, first responders, and then um, recreation. So, in summary, there are five things which will make us successful. Oh, sorry, I'll tell you about revenues first. <laughs> you, you sh I'm sure you care about those, right? Uh, here's our uh, rolled up revenue forecast from aviation uh, combined with the non-aviation segment. And here are the five things which will make us successful. We solve a real problem and we solve it now. We've partnered with the perfect strategic partner uh, we have, we're well protected, our IP is well protected. Uh, we have built a business which will be profitable and built to scale, and we have already identified the markets post-aviation. Perfect five to finish with. With that, please, from the panel. Um, <clears throat> well, first of all, the, the, the demo was near and dear to my heart as um, <laughs> former. <laughs> Product manager for Google Earth. Thanks for using my product. You're welcome. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I think I, I th actually I'll, I'll start with uh, a question. Um, when I, the same question that uh, was asked by Ken of me when I pitched him on Keyhole, and now that you know, which, and one you know one of the our challenges with Keyhole is proving you know that there was a market out there for this. Um, you know, what what do you think is the um, uh, well, I mean, you know, you we, we all make mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, very generous of you, thanks. <laughs> um, 
you, you showed a revenue projection, but what is the market size? What do you think is the, the total potential, you know, the TAM that you're addressing? Uh, right, so when, when you look at aviation by itself, we start with aviation, because uh, as you said, dear and, and near to your heart, we are, the founders are pilots. So that's near and dear to our heart. So the, the, the total available market for aviation training, you saw there is about combined more than $3 billion in, in aviation training. So we cap, what we want to do is we cap, we want to capture part of that market that will make aviation training safer, faster, and will eventually increase the number of pilots that are flying because that's a, a, an industry which is suffering from the uh, lack of more pilots who are coming into this business. But really what we want to do then is we, we want to take that intellectual property and apply it to other markets where um, having the ability to train and debrief something which cannot allow you to make errors is important. So think uh, railroads, uh, commercial truck drivers, mining, uh, first responders, healthcare, all of those industries are industries where we can apply that IP. So obviously there the TAM is significantly larger. So I know nothing about this space, but I do have some questions. So um, is it enough just to record and play back or are there other analytics or things that you can do post, right, to sort of benchmark people vis-a-vis -vis other people or to give them some kind of a, you know, some, some kind of a uh, triangulation in terms of how they, how they stack up or rank or things that they may have done wrong. I'm just wondering if there's, there's opportunities for automation there and what that does to your price point, if, if that matters in the context. Uh, of absolutely. There are, what we've shown here is the things that you would expect to be the basics, audio, video, yeah. location information, but then there are other issues related specifically when it comes to the more advanced type of flying. Uh, for example, instrument flying is all about following very strict procedures, uh, descending to a minimum descent altitude. All of these things can be overlaid and presented using those bookmarks that we've shown and then analyzed, compared, and against the minimum requirements that you need to meet. So you can really eventually get to a point where you can say, based on this flight, you would pass the minimum requirements, pass what's known as the check ride in aviation is a term called check ride or not. And then you can take it one step further and start comparing, as you said, compare one against the other. Uh, for example, in aviation and instrument flying, it's critically important to maintain a specific altitude. You're not allowed to deviate from that altitude. So you can see al altitude deviations, for example. I wonder if there's a certification business there for you too. If, you know, if you could get into that, uh, that level of analysis to be able to say, look, you, know, you passed the ISO 9000 right. version of, uh, of we, aviation flying. Right? There is strict, by the way, I want to make sure everybody understands, there is strict certification for aviation. However, we don't see that as part of our business model yet mainly because, especially in the U.S., this is very highly regulated by the FAA, and changes in FAA certification take five to ten years. So I don't think this would be in our immediate uh, business plan. I have a question. Following up on Noah's question, which I think you, you dodged quite well, um, how, how large is this market? If you look at Jepson, how much are they selling of your competitors' products per year? Uh, it's a good question because there is no competitor right now. Pardon me? There is no competitor to what we do. There are competitors for GPS receivers. Yeah. There are competitors for uh, cameras, but there is no single solution that integrates audio, video, location, and other sensors that we provide. Okay, I buy that, but there's one that's called toys or something but like that? Ken, unfortunately, we, we, we're okay. done, because uh, we have to make sure we stay on time, but, 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 but we could take that, we, <laughs> take that offline. That would be, that would be great, right, if you don't mind. Right, there. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much.